Hey everybody, we're back. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> Episode 11. I don't know why I paused. I think I was like waiting for some cheers. For or that. <sighs> for that. For that? Yeah. Okay. Is Episode 11. Episode 11. Whoop, whoop. Bam. Yeah. And today's shakes, <laughs> protein shakes, they oh, are gosh. provided by Mr. Tate Offawalo. Love. <laughs> we're on a protein grind. We got to get our gains in. I feel like I'm losing my games. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. All right. Okay. I'm, I'm excited. We're back with episode 11. This is amazing. Mm-hmm. Fun, and, fun, fun. Yes. So this is part two of mm-hmm. You Asked, We Tell, right? Yes. We had so many submissions that we uh-huh. had to break it up into two. And technically, we could probably do four probably. episodes of this because you guys send in so many questions. So, mm-hmm. But we're not going to do that to you. We won't put you through that pain. No. However, we did pull more questions so that we can answer them. And mm-hmm. we just want to thank you guys for participating. Yes, thank you this. so much. Yeah, so we are back. And we're going to start with, um, we're going to kick, kick it off strong. <laughs> because my <laughs> homie, Keon, you know who you are. <laughs> and please forgive me. I don't know if I'm even saying that right, but I believe it's Keon. Um, and their <laughs> their handle is so cool. Mm-hmm. Keon say Knowles Carter. That's their <laughs> handle. So we are, uh, you know, sisters from another Mister. He or she. I don't know your pronouns, so we'll just say they are mm-hmm. amazing. Mm-hmm. And we've been chatting on Discord on the <laughs> Two Idiot Girls Patreon. And this person is amazing. So anyway, we're sending you big love mm-hmm. from our studio. But he, they, sorry, they want to know, um, what is your favorite Beyonce song? Yeah. My favorite Beyonce song is Bonnie and Clyde. I it, love that song. It's her and, and Jay-Z. Yeah. yeah. Well, we were, when I asked him earlier, he goes, you know, that one with Jay-Z. Yeah. I'm like, what? I don't, what? I'm, <laughs> listen, I absolutely love Beyonce. Yeah. I was blessed enough to go to her uh her concert sure. this past summer sure thank you drew and mm. so mm. uh I, but i'm not a beehiver mm. uh, and only because I, I didn't even know that was a thing because sure. i'm old as dirt so i i i've always loved her songs mm-hmm. i've mm-hmm. loved her when she was in destiny's child mm-hmm. the whole night but i've never been a beehiver sure um so when he said you know the one with with uh, jay-z and i'm like <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and so we had to, we're so old. We had to look it up. Well, Beyonce, Jay-Z, <laughs> said Bonnie and Clyde, right? And then you play it and you're like, I know this song. I was like, oh, this song slaps. <laughs> I love this song. So anyway, that's Tate's favorite that's my song. my favorite song. Um, yes. But we have grown accustomed to, well, let me give you my favorite Beyonce yeah. song, yeah. is Love on Top. I said, <laughs> I told Drew, I said, man, if she doesn't play my song, I'm going to be so mad. Like, I'm a beehiver, right? <laughs> she got, and when they played it, oh, man, I'm going to try and find the video because I think my cousin Josh uh, took video of me singing it. Okay. Um, and I was, I was in my prime. I had a silver top on. I thought I was the tits, dude. I was like, I was supposed to be here. That's the only song I really know from, like, by heart. <laughs> I love it. And then when I looked at the lyrics the other day, I don't know what made me look at the lyrics. Um, I was like, man, that's kind of a suck ass song. Like the lyrics, meaning the meaning behind it. Cause mm. the way I read the lyrics was finally you're putting me first. So I was like, Oh, that's not Tate and I's song, <laughs> but I do love that song. That's such, <laughs> that's a banger. Right. But I wanted to say we are both, we have both come very accustomed to Texas Hold'em. Yeah, we have. We heard it Mm -hmm. on Super Bowl Sunday, Mm -hmm. which was amazing, Mm -hmm. and it was crazy. Mm -hmm. And when she released her song, and I immediately put it on Spotify. And I was like, country? That was my first response. (laughs) Country? (laughs) And then you start listening to it, and you're like, oh, yeah, this song slaps. (laughs) And then we were playing it at the car the other day, remember? Where were we coming back from? It was me, you, and Donnie. Mm-hmm. We were coming back, and I put that song on. Don was like, turn it up. And I was like, how does he know this song? And he sang every lyric in the yeah. back seat. I was dying. Yeah, he knew the whole song. I wanted to look it up because, you know, in your Tesla, you can look it up. Like, um, you can do karaoke yeah. in your car. And I was going to yeah. look it up, but we were already at our destination. Because yeah. I'm like, I want to sing the lyrics with Donovan. <laughs> he knew all the words. I'm like, how the hell does he know this? He was in the back going, turn it up. <laughs> 
It's like, oh my gosh, how does he know this? It was on repeat all the way home. Mm-hmm. Then when I was like, I was like, oh, that's her inside joke. Oh, somebody talked. <laughs> and then we have to rewind it, right? <laughs> whether it's a movie <laughs> or whether it's a song. My brother, um, <laughs> he made that up. Every time we'd watch a movie, if anybody would say anything, he mm-hmm. would look at you and go, oh, Tate talked. And then he would take the remote and like, re- like put it back like five minutes. And I'm like, knock it off. <laughs> That was just him because he has no attention span. He's worse than me. <laughs> so he's that was just him. He probably zoned out and he goes, oh, Noel talked. <laughs> and I'll rewind it. So anyway, we put that on. So thank you so much, Keon, for your question. Yeah. And next up we have what inspired the names of your kids? And this is by, and again, you guys, this I, we only have your handles. Um, this is by Vita Mia. Yeah. Yeah? I think that's right. Okay. So what inspired... The names of your kids. Let's start with Dason since she was the firstborn. Yeah, she's the oldest. Um, yeah, so Dason being the oldest, I I think we we didn't struggle too hard with it, did we? As far as finding that. No, name? we kind of did because I think was so? set in my mind. I'm listen. Sure. I was a tomboy, a tomboy growing up, mm-hmm. and I own. If I said I said if I have kids, mm-hmm. I only want boys. Right. I remember. I don't want any girls. Right. For whatever reason, mm-hmm. and. Maybe because they knew I was Helen Wills. And I was like, yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> and for whatever reason, the whole time, I just thought, my this kid yeah. is a boy. Yeah. I just, I'm going to will it into existence. Mm-hmm. And then when she was born, yeah. I was like, they're like, it's a girl. Because we waited to find out. Yeah. It's a girl. And I was like, what? Are you <laughs> sure? <laughs> Sobbing. And they're like, oh, she's so emotional. <laughs> and in my mind, I'm like, not a girl. <laughs> and when they handed it to me, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, this is okay. <laughs> well, then I'm like, okay, we get to go shopping. And it's going to be really fun. So I yeah. immediately woke up. <laughs> well, I we thought it was going to be a boy. So I liked what, what, what Dace, right? Mm-hmm. Dace. And mm-hmm. then what, what, where did we get the other part from? Dace. Nice. Mason. You're lucky. You like the name Mason. You got there right in the nick of time, my friend. <laughs> I remember. Just anyway, give me a second. He liked the name Dace. Mm-hmm. D A C E. Mm-hmm. We got it from a baby book. Mm-hmm. And then I like the name Mason. Mm-hmm. So I was like, two boy names. Rock on, dude. We're ready. <laughs> we'll see when the baby comes out. We'll see if he looks like a Dace or a, a Mason. Mason. Yeah. And then when she was born, it was like, it's a girl. And I was like, <laughs> what? And then I was like, Okay, we'll just put them together. Yeah. And that's how we came up with Dason. Yeah. But it was, I spelled it wrong. Yeah, he did. Tell him the story of how you spelled our daughter's name wrong. Go well, ahead. I mean, Dason, it, it, you know, the first, first three letters that come to mind is, is like from the high school, modern day, where we live, D E I. And then son was just S O N, right? Mm hmm. That's, that was what's going on. Let me tell you the story. It was automatic. So if you're from Southern California, or even if you're not, let me give you some background. There's a really um, well-known school Mm -hmm. in Orange County called Modern Day. It's a private Catholic school that's Mm -hmm. really well-known for their football program. Mm -hmm. And it's called Modern Day. Mm -hmm. So M-A-T-E-R and then Mm D-E-I. So I fell asleep in the hospital Mm -hmm. and the records lady, you know, pushed her card into my room and said, oh, we're going to put together the birth certificate or whatever. Mm -hmm. He's so sweet, didn't want to wake me up. And he goes, oh, I'll go ahead and take care of that. And so that's how our name came out. So mm-hmm. like Dason, mm-hmm. and he wrote it the way he heard it in his head. Because mm-hmm. I wanted to spell it D-E-Y-S-U-N. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. got it? Okay. And then we already decided that whether it was a boy or a girl, we didn't think it was going to be a girl, but the middle name was going to be Tate. Mm-hmm. So after you. Mm-hmm. And then, um, so he just said, oh, Dace and Tate, off a wallow. Perfect. <laughs> and then I woke up and I was like, he's like, oh, here's the receipt for the, you know, mm-hmm. the birth certificate. And I'm like, oh, awesome. Wait, no, her name spelled wrong. <laughs> I was furious. So then when we called the lady, lady back the next day, cause she came by for the, you know, for something else, I forget what. Yeah. And then I'm like, no, 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 I need to change it. And she goes, ooh, about that. <laughs> yeah, I already, I already turned it in. And I'm like, well, go unturn it in. Go get it. She goes, I can't. So in order for me, for us to change her mm-hmm. name, 
It's going to be. It was a whole process. You had to pay a whole bunch of money, like hundreds of dollars. You had to put their name in the paper saying we're publicly announcing that we're changing the name. And I was like, well, guess she's going to be called after. She's going to be named after modern day, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I can't. I don't have that kind of money. It was like $500 or something. I can't remember. It was crazy. I remember it was outrageous. So. But already, already <laughs> kicking it off with me pissing, <laughs> pissing me off. <laughs> and look how it turned out. It's pretty awesome. She absolutely loves her name. Yeah, it's pretty awesome now. And then, because she would say her name, mm. and then people would go, huh? <laughs> so I, I taught her, hey, just say it's like Jason, but with a D. Mm -hmm. And then, but that's how she always does it now. Hi, what's your name? Jason. Oh, it's like Jason with a D. Like, <laughs> they, you don't need to say that anymore. It's okay. If they can't pronounce it, too damn bad. <laughs> But I did that when she was little because she would get so frustrated because yeah. people wouldn't know her name. Yeah. yeah. She would be embarrassed. Yeah. So that's Jason. Mm -hmm. And then Drew, Drew. We named her Drew after Drew Barrymore because mm -hmm. I loved Drew Bar Barrymore. She was always in like funny, cool movies mm -hmm. and she was kind of like a hippie. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh man, I want like a really mellow baby, <laughs> you know? And then <laughs> her middle name is Tyson. Mm -hmm. And. <laughs> it's you I know it was me <laughs> it's not me oh, okay let me say it so just recently I told Drew this I fessed up and told her where I got the middle name Tyson, Tyson. yeah because when when she <laughs> when she was born Mike Tyson was like at the top of yeah, his game just, he was just crushing people and yeah. I'm like yeah this is a boy again I thought it was gonna be a boy yeah. we waited with Drew as well yeah. we didn't know what the sex of the baby sure and um, I'm like, man, this is going to be a boy. Yeah. This is going to be a boy. And I'm still going to name him Drew because yeah. it's it's a predominantly male name anyway. Yeah. Short for Andrew. And then um, the middle name is going to be Tyson nice. after yeah. Mike Tyson. Yeah. And then she was born. And I was like, it's still a kick-ass name, Drew Tyson. Yeah. And then people started asking me, Where did you? like, did you name her after Mike Tyson? Cause, and mind you, yeah. this is when he went cuckoo bananas. And he <laughs> bit off Evander Holyfield's ear. And he, he was like abusing his wife and all <laughs> just nothing but negative sure so i was like no i just <laughs> like i just like the name like whatever but i just told drew like not even a couple weeks ago the real story <laughs> the real story and now you guys have the real story of how we came up with tyson it was so badass when he was at the top of his game yeah. and then as soon as his trainer died he went nutty yeah. so anyway that's how he came up with drew and then with <laughs> then donovan donovan course after your yeah. brother so and donovan is named after my brother because mm -hmm. his name is donovan mm -hmm. and then his middle name is after my dad's first name mm -hmm. which is kamakoa mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's spelled with a t though yeah tamatoa mm -hmm. and um yeah and it just so happened everybody thinks that they all have the same initials on purpose sure and they honestly don't. don't. Dason Tate was just a fluke. Yeah. Drew Tyson was another fluke because yeah. I just like those. Yeah. And then Donovan Tamatua, yeah. he was the only planned kind of. Kind I already of. wanted to name if I had a son. I already, you know, he's gonna be after he's your brother. After my brother. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, what's the middle name? And I was like, oh my god, my dad's <laughs> my dad's name is Tamatua, yeah. but it, we call him Koa for short. Yeah. And so I was like. That was planned. So sure. I'm like, well, we might as well. So yeah. if I ever get the initials, yeah. all three kids are represented in one shot, right? <laughs> on a tattoo, on a necklace, like whatever it is. It's kind of genius, you guys. If you want to steal my idea, go for it. Then you only have to do it once, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else? No. About the names? No? No. All right. So moving right along, guys. <laughs> um, What? Are your favorite dates? dates and this was submitted by oh my gosh it looks like swearinity <laughs> like serenity but swear swearinity swearinity yeah yeah that's right good okay you know who you are <laughs> this person wants to know what our favorite dates are sure yeah when i the first uh thing that came to mind when when uh, we talked about these questions was that one mm-hmm and um, I, I always think about the sp the uh, spontaneous ones. Is that how you, yeah. is that the word? Mm -hmm. The spontaneous, like you know, we're both in our jobs or whatever, and there'd be a, a moment where, hey, I'm free for lunch today, mm -hmm. right? And I would I would automatically think I'm gonna see if 
New Orleans too. Mm-hmm. And it just so happened you were. And mm-hmm. then when we would go and meet up, I, I'd feel like, oh, I haven't seen you in so long. <laughs> and, uh, oh, you're so cute. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like it was like, those are the best ones. Aww. Those are the ones that are most memorable. Yeah. I think you always wanted to do those too, like when you were having a rough day. Probably. Yeah. Probably. And by the way, fun fact, I was never available, but I made myself available. Oh. I ca- I've canceled meetings. Yeah. I've moved meetings. Mm-hmm. Um, if I had a lunch date with someone else, mm-hmm. I would always cancel on them and mm-hmm. say, oh, yeah, you know, it just so happens I'm free. <laughs> I did, unless I was in San Diego and sure. I was too far away from you. Yeah. But I just that's a fun fact. I had to always move people around just yeah. so I could have lunch with you. You know what I mean? Because he never asked me very often to lunch. So <laughs> and it was a big deal when he did. And I made myself available to you. I know. It was so much fun. Those I are know. the ones that stand out to me. How about yourself? Um, I love also the spontaneous ones. Mm-hmm. And my favorite spontaneous one mm-hmm. was when we went to Ensenada with our friends oh, Liz, yeah. Liz and Sergio. Yeah. Um, it was, you knew Sergio already. Yeah. He was from a, work. Uh, yeah. yeah, from work. Mm-hmm. And um, I had never met his wife. Yeah. It was the and first time I met Liz too. Oh, okay. See. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. And um, he's like, hey, this was like on a Thursday. Mm-hmm. And I think Valentine's Day was on that Saturday. Yeah, the, over the weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's like, you want to do something fun and spontaneous? And mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, does the Pope wear a funny hat? Of mm-hmm. course I do. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, let's go. My friend and his wife, we want to go down to Ensenada. They have yeah. a house down there, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I was like, um, okay. I was kind of scared. I'm not going to lie. Because sure. we haven't been to Mexico, just the two of us. Like, Mm-mm. And so I was like, mm, okay. And we went and had the that it was almost like a movie yeah we did we did so much stuff yeah. like around the clock and it felt like three days yeah. but it was like just 24 hours yeah. the first day so yeah. it was so fun her dad was a diehard 49er fan yeah. so he was down there in Ensenada, and then he <laughs> went with us clubbing like yeah. it was crazy and then he had all these girlfriends <laughs> it was so nutty and it was the funnest time ever sure you had that drink that had the clams in the bottom, uh-huh. and they were like, "This uh-huh. you will not have," because we were hammered. hammered. Yeah, we were ham daddying, and they were saying, "If you drink this drink, you won't have a hangover." And you're yeah. like, eh, "Whatever, all right." Some old wives' tale, right? Yeah. And I couldn't drink it because I'm a texture girl. Like, you sure. won't catch me eating oysters, clams, sure. octopus, none of that stuff. And Tate drank it, and he was right as rain the next day. And I was mm-hmm. like, "Uh," the next day because I didn't drink it. There was a spoon in it. Yeah. So after the drink is gone, then you can eat all the clams. Ugh. Yeah. Yuck. It was so good. Yuck. I think I ate, I think I drank like more, almost 20 of them. Well, no wonder you didn't have <laughs> Your belly was full of clams. It was in that joint. The roof was so tiny, remember? And I had to walk like this. <laughs> we, we were in this spot. Like, like I don't but, even know where we were, to be honest, yeah. right? Because we trusted our new friends. Yeah, we were just wa- walking with them. We're like, we went right. to the carnival. Remember we went down no, to no, the, no, the I know, crowd? But, but we, did we go to the carnival the first? And then we went? No, we went to the bar first. Yeah, we went to the bar first. You then guys, we this bar looked like a house in The Hobbit. Yeah, like, <laughs> it was insane. It was like a, it had a thatched roof, yeah. and I'm only five three, and my head was almost touching the thing. Yeah. I mean, and he the whole night he was like ducking because it was so tiny, yeah. teeny tiny. Yeah. And then Liz's dad was dancing his ass off with all these women, <laughs> and it, it was so funny. He would say, "Hey, that's your new mom." <laughs> that's your new mom. <laughs> Dude, so fun. That was probably the most, the best, most spontaneous date we've ever done. Yeah, and then the cool. next morning, we ate Mexican food. Yeah. A little bit of hair of the dog. Cause you know, when you're hungover, you're like, <laughs> the only way I can get rid of this is if I keep drinking. So that's what I did. He didn't have to do that. And then we went home yeah, and it was we just cruised home. so freaking fun. Yeah. That was my favorite one. Good times with the Espediquetas. I know. Okay. Um, let's see. And also the ones where you're just like, hey, <laughs> when the kids are little yeah. and like, the girls were old enough to stay home by themselves and then they could watch it on and then sure. we'd be like, yeah, let's go get gas in the car. Yeah. Like, okay. We leave and we go to in and out <laughs> and then we'd sit in the car and have a date night. That was like escaping your kids. Right. And you're like, Oh, these little crumb snatchers. They always want to eat. So we'd go or we forgot about those. Or we go to target and we grab do, a Starbucks. We do our walk and we go eat at Subway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we go have, we go have we have coffee, <laughs> Starbucks, and then stuff at Subway. Listen, at parents, breakfast. parents, if you, <laughs> If you have kids that are old enough to stay home by themselves, this is what you do. You say, hey, we're going to go for our exercise walk. <laughs> and then they're like, okay, we'll be right back. Probably about an hour. Okay. And you go walk down to your local 
like store, mm. like whether it's you know Starbucks or yeah. wherever, get wherever. your coffee. Yeah. Then we'd walk to we would walk to Subway, have mm-hmm. a breakfast sandwich, yeah. and we'd just have a date. We'd yeah. talk about the week, and it's usually on a Saturday, maybe sure. Sunday, and we'd talk about the week and do whatever, yeah. and then we'd be like. Okay, time to walk back. Leave all the evidence. We wouldn't bring any. Even if I had coffee left over, throw it in the trash. And then we just walk home and go, woo, that was a nice exercise. That's our way. We could do a whole podcast on escaping your kids just for some peace of mind. Yeah. So anyway, all right, that's enough for the dates. <laughs> okay, uh, tips for success on running your own business. Yeah, uh, but we were in the thick of it a couple of years ago. Yeah. Right, in our financial business. Mm-hmm. I just tell you what I did, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was find out what my strength is in this company that we're building, yeah. And or either both of us together as a team, and focusing on just those things. Mm-hmm. So my one of my strengths was on the phone, and conversations on the phone because you you can't see me. <laughs> so that's the beauty of it. He's like, I'll make phone calls because yeah. no one can see me. No one can see me. <laughs> like I have to do the front facing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, so all for all you introverts, yeah. making phone calls. Is there's just, room. Yeah. There, you, there's a, there's a piece for you. <laughs> <laughs> there's a spot for you on our team. Yeah. You can just make phone calls. Yeah. Yeah. So I, that was my thing, and then and then I handed it right over to you to close business. Yeah. You'd book appointments, yeah. and then I'd go to them. So going back to the phone call thing, though, mm-hmm. here's what I can say to all you introverts out there oh. who are like, I don't know what I'm gonna do, or yeah. oh no, it's too scary talking on the phone. Listen. Yeah. You can be anyone you want to on yeah. the phone. You can have an accent. Yeah. <laughs> you can have you can you can pretend to be anybody you want. Yeah. As you know, it's obviously like, not fraudulent. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? It's Just, like you follow your script. You, and, yeah, exactly. And yeah. you're whatever you're doing, yeah. right? What, if you have to make phone calls, right? Yeah. If you're in sales, especially, mm-hmm. you're gonna ha- you're gonna have to make phone calls. Mm-hmm. But you could be anyone you want to. <laughs> so what I mean by that is you can say, I'm the most confident. Yeah. I'm the most successful Mm -hmm. i'm the most everything person Mm -hmm. and now i'm going to make this call and this person is going to set an appointment with me because it's not really you it's like what actors do yeah you ever noticed some of the best actors in the world are introverts when you when you you see them in an interview they're like i don't know like (laughs) i don't know you know case in point adam sandler sure he's an introvert Yeah. yeah But when he's on TV, he's the nuttiest guy ever. And he's funny, right? <laughs> yeah. It's because he's being someone he's not. He's a character. Yeah. So this is just that's just a little side tip sure. for you guys. Be whoever you want on the phone if you have to make phone calls. Mm-hmm. Yeah? yeah? Or if you're in customer service and you have to receive phone calls, mm-hmm. be whoever you want. <laughs> if you're an introvert. Yeah. And it makes it easier. Anyway, that's just my take on it. I'm not an introvert, but I know <laughs> sometimes people are difficult and then I turn into someone that I'm not. Yeah. So anyway. So that was one of the... Th- one yeah. of the things I focused on was yeah. when we were building the business uh, um, is doing finding out what my strengths were yeah, and just focusing on that. Yeah. And then so there's a lot of things if you're again, this could be like a whole sure. episode on sure. just building a business. Yeah. But I can tell you some like broad tips sure. because it depends on what your business is. Yeah. But I can tell you for sure. Number one is you have to believe in what you're doing. Yeah. So um, our good friend, Sarah, who made us the cups, she <laughs> believes and has fun in what she's doing. Yeah, the, the, right. The on vase, the vases. Vases yeah. Oh, <laughs> hey, girl, get into cups. Maybe that's another thing, too. Right? That's another like broad. And, you know, I'm just kidding. Um, the, vases. the vases. Thank you. The vases. <laughs> right. Um, she probably loves what she does. Yeah. Or, you know, so you have to love and believe in what you're doing mm-hmm. because you're you can't sell something or do something that you don't believe in. It's mm-hmm. not, you could probably do it short term, but you cannot do it long term. Mm-hmm. So that's the number one thing. Mm-hmm. The other thing is get your finances in check. And yeah. what do I mean by that? You got to open up. Um, if you're going to be a legit business, sure. you don't have to do it right away. You can get your business kind of started and then do it. But you should have an LLC, which mm-hmm. is a limited liability corporation, mm-hmm. right? That keeps you out of hot water and your personal stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so set up a business structure. And also set up and set aside money mm-hmm. for taxes. Mm-hmm. And even before you do that, set up a separate business account. If you're going to do a legit business, you open up a business account, but you can't get a business account unless you do the LLC uh-huh. and you get all your ducks in a row there. I was I, just going to say that. Again, yeah. this could be a whole podcast. Yeah. But get your finances in check with mm-hmm. your business account because you have to have a business account and a personal account. You cannot commingle the two. Sure. You'll get in trouble with the taxes, okay? The IRS. So... Love what you do mm-hmm. and really believe in it. Mm-hmm. 
you will have no problem selling yeah. your wares, yeah. whatever it is. Whatever it is. And make sure it's legitimate. Yeah. Number two, get your finances in check mm-hmm. with a business bank account, your LLC, and your mm-hmm. you know your business structure. Mm-hmm. Um, and number three would be, listen, it is going to take time. Yeah, patience. You are not going to be able, unless you are a freak of nature and mm. you're an anomaly. And there are some. Mm, there are some. There's no, there's no. But just let's just operate under the assumption that yours is not. Yeah. That way you're not, dis- you're not surprised when it's taking longer than you thought. Sure. The rule of thumb is five years. Mm. Okay. Give yourself five years. Does that mm-hmm. sound like a long time? Yes. But if you think about it in the grand scheme of things, think about where you're at right now mm-hmm. and five years ago. Mm-hmm. Did, didn't it go by fast? Mm-hmm. Right? Super fast. Super fast. So five years in the grand scheme of things is not that fast. Mm -mm. However, you give yourself a minimum five years to get it off the ground. The first two years, you're going to be on the struggle bus. The next two years, you're going to be like, oh, I'm starting to see some traction. And then that fifth year is like magic, right? It might happen sooner, but just in case it doesn't, that's kind of like the rule of thumb. Sure. Right? Sure. But the caveat to that, you guys, is Mm -hmm. if at some point you are losing your ass in something, or mm-hmm. you're losing money. You're constantly borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. Mm-hmm. It's just not working. Blah blah blah. It's okay. It's okay at that point. Point. Sure. To hang it up. Yeah. Even if you, because you don't want to keep sinking money mm-hmm. into something that's really not moving, or you're stressed all the time. You're gonna be stressed. Yeah. yeah. Right. Did you yeah. have something to add? Oh, I was just gonna say, um, there's there comes a point. It's not not to say it, it can't work. Maybe later. Right. Yeah. But, but there's a hole somewhere. Right. You got to mm-hmm. you got to you got to stop. Yeah. And it's OK. Yeah. And so even if you're at that point right now, let's just say we're sure. talking to you right now and you're at that point. We're like, man, I don't know. I don't know if I can keep doing this. There's yeah. a difference between giving up. Yeah. And knowing when to hang it up. Yeah. OK. So yeah. you're just that's that's up to you and, and where you're at in that sure. process. But if you decide to hang it up, that's OK. Yeah. Do you know how many billionaires there's not that many because they're ruling the world right now. Mm-hmm. But do you know how many billionaires out there have failed True. in business? Multiple times. Multiple times. You they have just to. keep going until they get it right. Yeah, you have to. Right? Yeah. So know when to hang it up, mm-hmm. but don't just give up. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. yeah. There's a reason why you, you want to do it. Yeah. It wakes you up in the morning. If you can't stop thinking about it, like that's the thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, at least that's how I would look at yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. And then I guess another one would be the last one mm-hmm. on this topic would be um, get yourself a mentor. Yeah, there you go. If, is there somebody in your field that mm-hmm. you, man, they're out, they're killing it. Mm-hmm. And I want to get in this space, too, but I really need some tips. Mm-hmm. Go talk to those people. Or even if they're not in your space, but you see them, everything they touch turns to gold, go mm-hmm. talk to them. Mm-hmm. But make sure you make it worth their time. Right. Mm-hmm. Think about how much time and energy and money they've put into getting to where they're at. Mm-hmm. You can't just say, hey, can I buy you a coffee and you can tell me all your trade secrets? That's not going to work, <laughs> right? There's got to be some kind of equal quid pro quo mm-hmm. kind of thing, right? So, so get get yourself a mentor, surround yourself with people who are like-minded, mm-hmm. yeah? And we'll lift you up all the time. Mm-hmm. There's another one too. All right, cool. All right, so, okay, this one's fun. <laughs> this one's fun. <laughs> oh, by the way, the tips for success in running your own business, that was by our friend Sarah, who does the vases. Not, yes. the, cu- not the cuts, guys. Stop saying that. No, if they're vases. <laughs> <laughs> it is her. It was her. I just saw that. Okay. Uh, great question. Yeah. Okay. Um, Hope that helps. Yeah, exactly. Um, the next one is, do you believe in aliens? By Jul- uh, Juliana? Yeah. I think Juliana something. Juliana JH12. Yeah. Juliana, <laughs> JH12. Yeah. Do you believe in aliens? Do I believe in aliens? Uh, I think so. Okay. I don't think I'm fully on board, but I think there's something similar out there. No? Why? I don't know. There's like, I mean, but like, you're you're currently in the information world, <laughs> so you can find everything on Google, right? Like, mm-hmm. but, but, you know, there's a lot of... Like I mean, aliens? Yeah. Well, I'm not saying... <laughs> Aliens, but like information. Okay. Right. Information about aliens. Yeah. Okay. Information about aliens, right? So. Huh? If there's so much information about it, uh huh. Right? Aliens, do they exist? If there's so many people talking about it, so maybe, how can there not be? How aliens? can it not exist? You're saying like a bajillion people can't be wrong. Yeah. Oh. They're talking about. It. They have information about it. They. Yeah, I. You know what? It's funny that you say that because I'm the. I used to think the same thing. Sure. Well, I kind of think the same thing because like. 
Is it just one person decided to draw that alien face with the big old <laughs> giant eyes and then that just swept the nation? Or are other people <laughs> seeing the same thing? Do they all, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, how did that? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't know. I think there are aliens, but here's where I think, where do you think the aliens are? Some people. Do you some, think they're in the space? In some, space? Some, no, some people, they're on here on Earth. Yeah. Yeah. You think they're on Earth? Some people say they're here on Earth. What do you think, though? It sounds believable. I don't think they're here on Earth. No? Like, walking with us. Yeah. I think they're in the ocean. The ocean's so freaking scary. And there's a reason why you can't go down to the depths of the ocean, to the bottom of the ocean. Some places you can, some places you cannot. Well, why? I mean, it's too deep. Like Yeah, because you know why? Com like yeah, little... the compression. Yeah. You know why? Because... Humans aren't supposed to be down there. Only aliens. Holy crap. That's, that's my theory. <laughs> that's my theory and I'm sticking to it. The ocean's freaking scary. It is. Where did the Bermuda Triangle come from? I don't know. It just sucks everything up and no one knows where anything goes. How come? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> We're all conspiracy theorists. I, I just think it's crazy. No one can explain that. I mean, they can they can do the science and say, oh, you know, we can't go down because like you know, our eardrums and, mm -hmm. and our, our lungs will collapse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're not supposed to be down there. <laughs> Leave them alone. Right? right? They can't bring up the Titanic. They can't do any of that shit. Why? Dude, what about the people who dive for funsies with like that um that extreme diving? What oh, is it? Oh, the free divers? They're free divers. Yeah. <sighs> It makes me grasp for yeah. air just thinking about it. That's Why? Why? Honey. The aliens don't want you down there. <laughs> Why? Why? For those of you who don't know, free diving, look it up. It's pretty extreme. Dude. Mm -mm. Extreme. Listen, I am <laughs> deathly afraid of suffocating. Like, like underwater. Underwater. Sure. Yet I love you to talk, surf. Love talk, to surf. You talk, you talk about being underwater a lot. Yeah, we, <laughs> man, like some of my scariest dreams when I wake up yeah. in a cold sweat and I'm panicked yeah. is because I was drowning yeah. or I was in a pool with a big old orca, like a swimming pool with a big old orca. Yeah. Or, or yeah. I always know, you guys ever have those dreams? I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going off topic. You ever have those dreams where like it's a recurring dream? It happens all the time, but it only happens like at certain times. So when I when back in the day when I was really stressed about money, mm -hmm. I always had the same dream. That we were on a beach and then the the wave just came out like there was going to be a tsunami. And then this giant hundred foot wave was coming down and I'll as you see it coming like this. And I just know it's going to pummel my ass. <laughs> and then I wake up in a cold sweat every time. I wake up and I go, man, let me check my finances. <laughs> that's probably why I'm stressed. That's probably why I'm having a dumb dream. Every time I would stress about money, it was always that giant wave. So I think that's symbolic mm. of the stress. Mm. So I think I told you that story. I, um, haven't I, was, I told you that dream? That's what I was trying to remember. Oh. It doesn't sound familiar. Oh, that's because he never so. listens. That's oh. okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Just, no, just like, admit you don't listen to me when I no. talk. You kind of tune out because I go all over the place. <laughs> it's true. I know you go all, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah, you do go all over the place. It's okay. You make it interesting. I still love you. You make it interesting. Mm. That's a good one. That's a good comeback. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I've seen anyway, that before. I've anyway, seen that before. We are off topic because I just, you know, it went from one thing to the other <laughs> in free diving. And then I talked about my, anyway. So here we are talking about believing in aliens. Believing in aliens and aliens are in the ocean. That's my theory. This is our listener from Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, their name is, is Jackie's. Jackie? Mm -hmm. S S Jackie's VDR yeah. or Jackie SVDR. Mm -hmm. Anyway, she said listener from, or they, they mm -hmm. said listener from Mexico here, any advice on how to deal with having a rough childhood? Mm -hmm. So we kind of pondered on whether or not we should put this or sure. talk about this only because um, it depends yeah. um, on what the situation is. Mm -hmm. So we can give you direct advice, mm -hmm. even though it's uns—it's not unsolicited. You're asking, mm -hmm. but it's um, not professional advice. Yeah. So we'll keep it very light and above, you know, kind of general sure. and not so specific. Mm -hmm. 
and maybe we can only talk about our own Experience. experiences. Okay. Yeah. So for actually, why don't you go first? Okay. So I know when we when this question came up, we were going over it. I thought when my mom passed away, mm-hmm. all the siblings are there. We're going through the funeral, blah blah blah. And then afterwards, when it was over, my older brother, who was with, who's there with us, arranged the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, he said, "Hey, man, like uh, let's stay in touch. You know, like this this you know, mom's gone." That was kind of like our connection. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want this to stop, right? So, wait, can I pause you right there? Sure. So, like, what I was gonna say is to give everybody context. Sure. You and your siblings aren't very close. No, they're no. not close like Dace and Drew Donovan. Close. No, not like that. So, I just wanted to give that context sure. because the reason why your brother was seeing that, yeah, is because your mom's funeral brought you guys, yeah. you and your older brother, very close together. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah. To make a long story short, um, since then we've been connecting twice, maybe three times a month, mm-hmm. whether it's through text or a phone call. And it's basically just how you doing? How's your day going? How's your week going? So it, it, it started to get deeper, mm. right? It, th- it started to get super deep. And then we started talking about upbringing. And then we started talking about how we were raised. Whereas adults looking in realize that it's not the best upbringing, right? I mean, we were so stricted as far as religion was concerned. It, it was you know, you, you didn't talk about stuff like this. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just um, you're like, you're not supposed to. So your experiences. Yeah. The experiences. Mm-hmm. Right. So we're having these conversations and we're, all these things are coming up. And I was like, I didn't know this was you. And he was going, you didn't know. I didn't know this was you. So we were both living it, but experiencing very differently mm-hmm. and growing up s- super not connected. Mm-hmm. Right. And so how I feel like at 51 years old, I'm finally healing is me and my brother are talking about it. Mm-hmm. And we're being open about it, and we're listening. Mm-hmm. And Did you feel like the what you were feeling in your experiences that were rough? Sure. Whatever though that means to you. Sure. Did you feel like you were the only one experiencing that in that way? Of course. Mm. That's why I was saying earlier I was so shocked at what he was saying because mm. I was like I didn't even see you like that. You were never like that when I was younger. I looked at you at like this. Mm-hmm. But see, that just tells me. He had his own personal experience, even though we were still living in the same house, mm-hmm. having being you know raised by the same parents. We both experienced our lives differently, yeah, you know, and mm-hmm. traumatically, right? Yeah. That that and that's the thing right here. I, to 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 answer your question, I think I'm barely doing it now, and by doing it, I'm just having conversations with my brother about it. Mm. So that's one way. Yeah, that that's one way. Just you know, connect with your siblings. You know, yeah. and I think that's really good too because. You grow up in the same house, mm-hmm. you have the same parents mm-hmm. or parent or guardian or whoever you're growing up with, mm-hmm. and you can all see the same incident, yeah. but experience it three different, four different ways. How many siblings are you? Yeah. Five of you, right? Five. So same thing with me. Like same. There's three of us and we could all see this one thing happen, mm-hmm. but I see it different than my brother or my sister. Exactly. And we all have different perspectives yeah. on that. So I think yeah. that's a, a great way to get through that. Yeah. But let me just play devil's advocate. What sure. if you don't have siblings? What if you're an only child? Sure. What if you're adopted? Sure. What if, you know what I mean? Yeah. So to that, I would say, and again, this is very general. Sure. Okay. But these are some of the things that have helped me personally mm-hmm. without you knowing my background and the context. Mm-hmm. Here's what I do that helps me. Number one, therapy, mm-hmm. if you can afford it, because mm-hmm. therapy is so expensive if not they have counseling yeah counseling is different if you can get that Mm -hmm. get into that but make sure these people are compatible with you and who you are and how they're talking to you that's a big deal that's number one the social media groups i wouldn't go there no particularly maybe if you're an only child or Mm -hmm. you don't have anyone to talk to maybe i would just be very careful about that because people are toxic of course and especially if you don't know them um, I was going to say therapy, journaling, reading books and or, you know, listening to books and then also maybe looking up like on YouTube, what I call it YouTube University, University yeah. you know, but with professionals and people, <laughs> just take anything you get online. Sure. OK, if you're doing some self-diagnosing and all that. Anything you get online, take it with a grain of salt. Don't mm-hmm. believe everything. And then the things that you do believe mm-hmm. and you think that they'll help you research those first. Yeah. Just don't take everything at face value. Sure. Things are just nutty out there, okay? Mm-hmm. So how I manage, you know, my feelings and my experiences that were rough 
really rough mm -hmm. growing up. Um, if you can get there, like therapy, not everybody can do that. Mm -hmm. I understand that. So if you can, amazing, mm -hmm. right? Um, journaling, mm -hmm. it's amazing how therapeutic journaling can be, right? And how far you can see how you can see how far you've come, mm -hmm. right? So journaling on day one is going to look different than journaling on three, day three sixty five. Pretty cool. If you do it consistently, yeah. you're going to be able to look back and you're going to be you're going to be proud of yourself. Mm -hmm. But you're also going to be, you're going to cry. Mm -hmm. At least I did. When I look <laughs> back and see what I wrote before versus mm -hmm. now, I'm like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, I've come so far. Mm -hmm. And it didn't even feel like 365 days. <laughs> it <laughs> felt like fast. two days. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think that would help you a lot. Mm -hmm. And then maybe social, like you were saying, finding people in your same group, yeah. or whatever. Like, I'll give you an example. We just watched that documentary. What was it called? Which one? The one about the, the, the kid camps. The program. The program. Mm -hmm. You guys, the program is nutty. It's on Netflix. Mm -hmm. It's on Netflix, and it's about those camps where they come. Paris Hilton did a whole YouTube shit series yeah. on it. Your parents pay these people to come kidnap you and take you to a boot camp of some sort. Mm -hmm. And they're all, most of them are in Utah, which is weird, yeah. but they're all over the world. This, this specific one was in upstate New York. Upstate New York, mm -hmm. but then they talked about the owner of that one owned Correct. a bunch. And those people mm -hmm. those students mm -hmm. are adults now mm -hmm. found each other mm -hmm. in a group on facebook, facebook i want to say it was, was. And yeah they started like myspace and then it went to facebook then it went to facebook so you can find strength in numbers oh, from no. people who have experienced maybe the same thing you have or something like that so sure. so going back to your social that could that's why i said maybe yeah maybe that could it happen. depends yeah anyway um we are here for you we could mm -hmm. be part of your <laughs> healing journey just tune in and However, we can help. We would love to. So thank you for tuning in from Mexico. Yes, That's thank you. Freaking awesome. No. OK, uh, moving on to a question by Meg Jonesy 99. <laughs> Cute name. Yeah. Um, what is your go to fun drink and your favorite ice cream? I think my go to fun drink would be uh, the zero calorie ice sparkling. Yes. Yeah. He's obsessed. I am. They're like sparkling drinks. Uh -huh. The name is ice. I always mm -hmm. have to clarify that because people are like, he likes to eat ice. No, <laughs> it's a drink called ice. Yeah. It's a sparkling zero calorie drink. Mm -hmm. I don't know why you said zero calorie because you don't want the sugar. Or No, no. Was, cause is that what it's called? No, it's on there. Zero calories. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay. Um, and he's obsessed with them. Yeah. The fruit punch, to be exact. Yeah, it's fire. I think we're going to throw up a picture that shows him how fired up he was when i found a yeah. one liter yeah. of this drink because normally it comes in is it eight 16 ounces or Probably 16 this one is like i don't know 36 ounces <laughs> it's giant <laughs> he was like take a picture of me and send it to the, the family chat look what i found <laughs> yeah. so that's your favorite fun drink yeah and then my favorite ice cream is the mud pie mojo from uh, oh, from cold stone cold stone yeah. yes it's fire that would be my favorite too yeah yeah, that's my favorite ice cream, too. And my favorite fun drink? Are we talking cocktails? What are we talking about? I was going to say is uh, that espresso martini. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like, is it a, a grown-up drink? Well, that's my new hyperfixation is <laughs> the espresso martini. Yeah. But it's got to be made with vodka because I cannot stand gin. Go-to fun drink, non-alcoholic, would be a Diet Dr. Pepper. Sure. For sure. That's yeah. I don't think that's fun, but whatever. <laughs> and then my favorite grown-up drink mm -hmm. man i love a good whiskey sour mm. that's my go-to drink or a seven and seven that's mm. probably my go-to drink and then espresso martini mm -hmm. made with vodka is mm. my new hyper fixation <laughs> so i'm a low-key alcoholic <laughs> just kidding too much i was gonna say too much <laughs> I, well i can't discriminate against my favorite drinks my favorite alcohol drinks anyway i could go on and on because i do love me a grown-up cocktail not as often as i used to i think that comes with Getting old. Sheesh. Okay. okay. So, yeah, that was right. Meg Jonesy right, right, right. 99. But we're just going to dive right into advice on establishing a healthy relationship with your daughter while still raising them. That's but a good one. By Cass yeah. Giselle. We have two daughters. Yeah. Yes. Correct. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This could be a podcast on its own. It could be. We'll give it light yeah. and quick. Yeah. Honestly. Okay. Let's just go through it from the, from the womb mm -hmm. until, like, adulthood mm -hmm. so in the womb we played music on mm -hmm. my belly with mm -hmm. headphones right the mm -hmm. like ones that look like this <laughs> <laughs> well you guys with your airpod maxes and all this shit so i played 
classical with Jason. That's uh-huh. probably why she's so calm. Mm-hmm. Then I said, let's switch it up. And when I was pregnant with Drew, and I played mm-hmm. rap and R&B. And R&B. Mm-hmm. Coincidence? So, um, so okay. while you're raising your daughter, you mm-hmm. got to instill trust. Yes. That means having communication. Communications is, is my big thing. I, mm-hmm. I feel like right away. Yeah. I feel like the girls, um, anything happened to them, no matter what, they, they could call us. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel like our, our well when they got older. No, I we're talking about from their from their younger right now. Sure, but how I was uh, gonna, <laughs> gonna say how they got there was because of the way we we work with them as as kids. Oh, you know, uh-huh. we gave okay. them we gave them responsibilities. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good. Let's talk about responsibilities. Sure. Right, because we sure. wanted to, them to be better than us. <laughs> better. Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> Every good parent wants their kids to be better than them. Yeah. But independent. Yes. So we did a lot of things. Building a healthy relationship is building trust mm-hmm. and giving them their independence. Mm-hmm. A lot of parents don't like mm-hmm. to do that. They like to helicopter parent. Yeah. They like to like yeah. be breathing down their necks, knowing mm-hmm. their every move. I promise you that's never going to serve you well. They're going to want to run yeah. run away from you so fast the minute they get the chance. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So communication, trust, trust. building trust, yeah. and building that independence. Yeah. Raising them, you, you, you want them to do... <laughs> Just do good and not do bad, you mm-hmm. know, like just, just be a good person, you know, like mm-hmm. that's all I kept saying when they were young, like just be good people, man, do good, do good, you know what I mean? Don't mm-hmm. mess, don't mess around. And that was like my main focus as I was growing up and then, you know, we'd get them a cell phone, mm-hmm. right? And say, okay, here, you can have a cell phone. That's responsibility, mm-hmm. right? That's like- And okay, trust. And trust. And like, hey, when you get here, I want you to call me. Mm-hmm. When you get here, I want you to call me. And they were doing that. And mm-hmm. so it's like, here, here are the keys to the car. And they, they, you know, just slowly, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, those little things, even though they drove me nuts, but mm-hmm. because I was so nervous, but it's like they they weren't doing anything to not give them those responsibilities. They were doing everything they were supposed to be doing. We were happy. We were building this relationship where I can trust them. They can trust me. Mm-hmm. If they were to get into an accident in the car, if they were to, something would happen, they can call me and tell me, mm-hmm. right? Like, yeah. That's I think that's was our was our thought process going through it all with them. Yeah. You know? And it's a give and take. Yeah. Right. So like you're saying, I trust you, mm-hmm. you trust me mm-hmm. until you give me a reason not to. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And so I love that. And that's how we built a healthy relationship with our girls. Mm-hmm. Um, trust is a big deal. So mm-hmm. when you give them responsibility, that's like you saying, I trust you mm-hmm. to give you more responsibility. Mm-hmm. And that's a great point because you have to do that along the way yeah. and it's different milestones so how yeah. you treat them in the fifth grade is sure. different than how you should be treating them in eighth grade sure. which is different how you should be treating them in the 10th grade right. and so on and so forth yeah so you have to grow with your with kid yeah. you can't be stuck in the <laughs> in the fourth grade parent mode yeah. yeah you have to move with your kids with the kid yeah. that's how you build a healthy relationship mm-hmm. while you're still parenting them sure and then what's going to evolve, you do it right, you guys, I'm telling mm-hmm. you, we're living proof. Mm-hmm. You do it right, you're going to start seeing stuff that is going to make you so proud and yeah. tear up at the same time because mm-hmm. you're like, hot damn, they were listening. <laughs> All those times and they're like, uh, when you're lecturing them. Yeah, like, you, like uh, remember I mentioned earlier, when Dason was in college, mm-hmm. she had to do laundry. Mm-hmm. And she went upstairs to do laundry and, and there was a girl crying with her laundry basket. And she went and asked her, hey, is everything okay? And she said, I don't know how to do this. Yeah. Can you imagine being a freshman in college and not knowing how to wash your clothes? Yeah. And I say that facetiously because uh, apparently there's a whole bunch of kids who don't know how to do that. <laughs> sure. But our kid wasn't one of them. Our kids started doing chores and started doing washing their own clothes by the time they were seven. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like literally yeah. full on, full loads. You yeah. wash it. You switch it to the dryer. You yeah. fold. You put away. Yeah. And, um, you know, they hated it. Of course yeah. they did. They used to fight. They said Drew used to fight over whose turn it was to do the dishes or whatever. So finally I'd had it. I'm like, I'm (laughs) sick of this shit. Listen, this is how, this is the new plan. Okay. We're going to do it by months. Okay. Mm -hmm. And obviously this is like, you know, when they're old enough to understand this by months. So like, the month of January, yeah. Drew, you're on bathroom duty. Jason, you're on kitchen duty. Yeah. And includes everything in, in between. And then we're not switching those job duties yeah. until February. Yeah. And then so on and so forth. Right. So we squash that right away. Mm-hmm. But we gave them lots of responsibilities, lots of chores. Yeah. So when they did get older, right. it was like nutty. I got to tell this story. I just had a brain blast. <laughs> when Drew was, I think, I want to say eight or nine years old. Uh-huh. This was one of the very few times we let her spend the night somewhere else. Mm-hmm. She went with her really rich friend and her parents mm-hmm. that played. I think we talked about it in the last podcast. Yeah, the soccer family. The soccer family, yeah. right? We we let them 
we had to divide and conquer. Mm-hmm. And so she spent the night at her friend's house. Mm-hmm. Now her friend, I believe, lived in like South Orange County in this giant mansion Mm -hmm. and where they had a full-time maid full-time nanny Mm -hmm. the whole nine so that night they left the because we were in a tournament yeah they left the tournament they went to their house we Mm -hmm. left we did whatever wherever we were i think we had to take Jason to to her tournament Mm -hmm. or something like that Mm -hmm. and so i told drew hey when you get to their house ask them where you can you know she had a little overnight bag yeah ask them where you can wash your uniform yeah because you have to wear that uniform the next day. Yeah. She said, okay. Actually, both uniforms. They had two, two different colored uniforms. Yeah. She said, okay. So they get there, and she says, hey, uh, where's your laundry room? Yeah. And then she's to like. To her friend. To her friend. Yeah, her friend. And her friend goes, for what? <laughs> and she goes, well, I have to wash my uniforms. Aren't you going to wash your uniforms? She goes, oh, yeah, Lupe will do that. Yeah. And she's like, who's Lupe? <laughs> you know, Drew, who's that? And she's like, oh, that's her housekeeper or something yeah. and she was like oh, no. my mom will be so mad if she knows that i made somebody else wash my clothes yeah. and she was like just show me how to do it and she goes you know how to wash your own clothes she was flabbergasted yeah. gobsmacked yeah. she was just like huh yeah. and she's like yeah so then D- uh, drew says oh yeah it was like i was showing off because i was like <laughs> and there was a bunch of little girls there too on their team yeah. and they're like no way and then she's like yeah i'll show you and then it was like a novelty she was like and then you do this and then you and they were like, and then as soon as the parents came downstairs, they were like, did you know that Drew knows how to wash <laughs> her own clothes? And the parents were like, why do you have to wash your own clothes? I was like, don't you dare tell my kid you can't. You know what I mean? So anyway, <laughs> it was, we've, we built independence we at did. a very early age. And it's not because we had little slaves running around. No. It's because we didn't want them to be incompetent when they got older, <laughs> you know? And so I remember when Jason called us and told us that. Mm-hmm. She was like, it's crazy. I I'm so glad I know how to wash my I know. My she was, that's the thing. When they say that, oh, my God, when they tell you. Yeah. Ugh. And then you're like, oh, my God. Oh, my God, they were listening. Well, as a parent, you're like, ooh. Yeah. We did something like, right. Like, I think I cried yeah. when she called and told me to tell me that. And I was like, she's listening. She's being a good girl. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Aww. She's in college and she's being a good girl. Aww. You know? Me, I was like, that's you're damn right, you know how to do that. <laughs> Hell yeah, girl. <laughs> Mom. Anyway, all right, that's cool. So, those are yeah. some of the ways you know you build trust, you communicate with them extensively. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that just that doesn't mean talking at them, that means talking with them, yeah. getting their feedback, coming to a consensus when they do something wrong, explain to them why mm-hmm. you didn't like what they did, things sure. like that. And then, I mean, build independence. One of the other things, too. Mm. Okay, and this is going up to the college years again. Mm-hmm. You got to let them go. I know. It was so hard for Tate. I mean, it was yeah. hard for both of us. Sure. But for me, I was, you know, I've been independent since I was 14 mm-hmm. years old. So mm-hmm. I was like, all right, let's do this. Yeah. And when they applied to schools, mm-hmm. I said, hey, you apply to schools away from California. Yeah. You can have two schools that you apply to here. Mm-hmm. Those are your, oh, yeah, I'm for sure going to get into these schools. And all the other ones, long shot schools. and Go out of state. Go out of state. Yeah. Because let me tell you something, if you're at that impasse right now yeah. and your kid's about to go to college or you're getting ready mm-hmm. to like start planning for that, you are d- not doing them a service. You're mm-hmm. doing them actually a disservice if you <laughs> if you don't let them go where they want to go. Now, sure. if they want to stay local, okay. But you know what? My kids did too, especially Dason, because mm-hmm. she's a mama's girl. And I'm <laughs> like, absolutely not, girlfriend. <laughs> you got into University of Oregon, you're going. Yeah. Just like that. Because it made them independent it made them into productive Mm -hmm. citizens of society yeah and it gave them their independence Mm -hmm. and they figured out who they were Mm -hmm. right which is amazing yeah college years i remember with the girls Mm -hmm. you know i'm telling you you won't regret it those are fun yeah i I remember those oh my gosh we should do a whole podcast on college i know okay note to self okay (laughs) i'm telling you because i won't remember okay so those are the some of the some of the things yeah um, I think we can probably do maybe two more. Two more. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, what are your favorite dishes mm-hmm. and meals to cook by the Valmeister? Is this my therapist? Is this Val? <laughs> I don't know. Is that a is that a burner account? What's what? going on here? Just kidding. Are you with me? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. To cook, what do you like to cook? I like to barbecue. You like to barbecue. Yeah. That's your jam. Yeah. Okay. 
Because you always say, do I have to barbecue? Can we just cook it on the stove? No, because because that's when I'm doing it like mm-hmm. every day. Mm-hmm. What do you like to barbecue? S- spare ribs. Spare ribs? Chicken. Okay. And hamburger patties. All of that is marinated in my secret sauce. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. What do you bring to the table besides the secret sauce? Uh, My appetite? No. The <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that one of the best meals, don't you think? Oh, no, yeah. It's right? delicioso. Yeah, right? <laughs> That's why I said it. No, I know. Okay. So, but my favorite meals to cook, I don't like to cook. I And that's a personal choice, okay? So don't judge me for that. <laughs> but the dishes I am good at, it, when I do cook, I'm pretty good at it. Like, I can I can attest to that. So I'm pretty good at making homemade lasagna. Yes. Um, And I'm pretty good at making pancakes because mm-hmm. they're not made... A regular way, I have some secret ingredients in there. <laughs> um, and my kids love, we used to do Sunday breakfast all the mm. time. And they'd be like, please make your pancakes. <laughs> um, and I have I have bequeathed and passed on the torch yeah. to my son, Donnie. So now he knows how to make my secret he pancakes. He can make them to the T. Yeah. It comes out great. So those are probably my favorite. My lasagna. Oh, and my pozole. I make a mean ass pozole. Right. Yeah. I think next time, though, I'm going to make it with chicken and not pork. I'm sure it'll come out good. I'm going to try it. Oh, it's going to come out good. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Okay. <laughs> and then the last one, we're just going to jump right into sure. um, Low Tide High Sky wants to know if we were both born in Samoa. Um, no. No. Nope. not. No. Um, I was born in Orange County, yeah, <laughs> California. S- same. Yeah. Um, but we. <laughs> I want to go to Samoa. Yeah. I've never been. Mm-hmm. But when you were in the sixth grade, Mm -hmm. your parents packed it up and went back to the island. Moved to Samoa. Yeah. And I was there till what? After my junior year in high school. Yeah. And then you came back. And then I came back. And then all hell break loose because you met me. (laughs) The devil incarnate. (laughs) Um, But yeah, we were not born in Samoa. No. no. Um, Our parents were. Yeah. Um, I got to live there and experience it and. And you're fluent. You yeah. speak Samoan. And because I was living there, I, I learned the language. I learned my culture. And mm-hmm. I'm forever grateful for that experience. Yeah. You know? And I know when the kids were born, I wanted to have them experience it. We just never had the chance to, hmm. you know. But And you didn't even teach them the language. I know. It's mm-hmm. not, hey, I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> Time is not up yet. <laughs> I know. But the window to teach kids... <laughs> Um, a second language is between the ages of one and five. <laughs> and funny how Donovan knows how to speak Spanish <laughs> because <laughs> he went to a dual immersion school. Um, but yeah, I want to go to mm-hmm. Samoa. I don't know if you're going to make it, though. I know. Just being honest. Tell him why. There's bugs. I don't do bugs. Lots of bugs. I don't. Do, not much scares me except for bugs. Bugs. And in particular, mosquitoes. Yeah. Those because are the, the mosquitoes are as big as the Stanley right <laughs> Can you imagine? And I am a mosquito s- magnet. I am a smorgasbord, I, if you will. I am a yeah. hometown buffet that's open for business <laughs> when it comes to mosquitoes. Yeah. I listen. You ever want to torture me and get information out of me? <laughs> Just put mosquito bites all over me. Chicken pox. <laughs> <laughs> whatever anything that itches i just it's a thing i can't but, you know um my cousin came back right matt i, sp- and oh, I yeah, spoke yeah. to him yeah he just came back he i think he said he was there for like a month yeah he said he got drilled man. see <laughs> I said he and then got he, drilled. Is it, why does he share these stories with me because then now i'm like now i'm never going it's like i going just on remembered a cruise. it's like going on a cruise i will not go on a cruise. i just remembered he said he got drilled last night he was there he got drilled i know you told me already and he's like you're not going to make it. There. You're going to make it. So if anyone out there who lives in either Western Samoa or American Samoa and has a, has a, like a hack of how I can't get bit <laughs> or I can get bit minimally, yeah. not like, oh my gosh, you know, in Stitch, the little alien. Yeah. Remember when yeah. he was like, oh, the, yeah, like the mosquitoes yeah. were supposed to be like, like. They're communicating. Yeah. They're communicating. <laughs> and then they just all like swarms him and he's yeah. like. They like me. That's me. <laughs> Picture that. Yeah. I'm the little alien with all the mosquitoes. Yeah. I'm not even joking. I know. This past summer was probably the worst mosquitoes we've ever had. Mm-hmm. And we live in Southern California. Sure. It was a nightmare mm-hmm. to the point where I'm like, I, I'm going to invest like a million dollars in those mosquito buzzer zapper thingies. 
and literally they're all around the house, <laughs> like all the way outside on the porch. Like they were everywhere in the, mm. they were, I had two of them in the garage. Remember? Yeah. Cause I'm like, I'm not going out in the garage with those mosquitoes. <laughs> I'm just not going to do it. Crazy. Yeah. So if anyone has any remedies or hacks or whatever, I did hear. And if someone knows if this is true, let me know huh. that there's a, a, it's it's a lotion called Ever So Soft or So Soft something by Avon. Uh -huh. It's been on the market for like 30 years. Uh -huh. And for what whatever's in that lotion is a bug repellent. And you don't get bit. I don't know if it's true. If someone knows if it's true, please drop, <laughs> send me a DM yeah. or put it in our comments. Yeah. If you if you know if that's true, it's by Avon. Or if you know how to use something else where I won't get bit. Once you get past that, you'll be it'll be... It'll be a, it'll be a great experience. Here's the thing. It, it 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 doesn't last. I mean, they come, they go. It doesn't last. They come, they go, they leave. You know what? It's like Will Ferrell. Remember when that big old mosquito <laughs> is on his back? That's how it feels like to me. Remember, he turned around and he had this giant, <laughs> and the mosquito was this big, and it was just <laughs> sucking the life out of him, and he started turning pale. That's me. I am not even joking. So they leave, but they leave their remnants on me. <laughs> then I can't not scratch them. Because I'm a child and I need like <laughs> mittens for my hands so I don't scratch. And then they scar because I, I scratch them so much in my sleep. I, I scratch. Yeah. And then they then they open up, they bleed, and then all hell breaks loose. <laughs> right? So I really want to go to Samoa. So somebody help me. She's like, can I go in a hazmat you'll, suit? <laughs> you'll be all right is what I'm saying. After it says right. who? You just said your cousin Mac got drilled. But he said that was the last night. But it was like, he was <sighs> like, whatever. Man. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's it for today. <laughs> that was wild. That was wild. That was freaking wild. No. What do you guys think? <laughs> Drop your comments and let me know if you think I'm going to be I, I, I'm being dead serious. <laughs> should I go? Should I not go? She should go. I don't want to scar. I don't want to be miserable. The that's, only reason why, the only reason I'm telling you to go is because that's, that's where your family's from. I know. So you got to go and do that. At least so, at the very least, go do that. Listen, I saw this TikTok. I I don't know who put it up, mm -hmm. but he the, the TikTok I sent you about, mm -hmm. this guy filmed. He said, let's make it cinematic. And he went mm -hmm. to Samoa. Mm -hmm. I, I want to say, was it American Samoa or was it Western? I, I wasn't sure. It looked like Western. Because it had that hole where they yeah. went swimming. Isn't that in it's America? It's in Western. Oh, it's in Western. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, it was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I was watching it mm -hmm. crying. Mm -hmm. It was like... I want to go so bad. You got to go. You got to go. You guys help me out. We'll be fine. We're your internet parents. We're we'll asking you. <laughs> we'll load up on Avon. And, and I want to know if it works. We'll be all right. I need to test it out. Anyway, let me know. Do you think guys? Do you guys think I should just muscle through it and go? Or do you think I should be prepared and find out remedies of how I won't get bitten? No, because the more you do that, then the I don't want to scar, gonna, though. You're going to create expectation like you'll never get bit. You just, you're going to get bit. You just got to accept it. Listen, anyway, <laughs> we're, that's enough. We're done. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll be out here all night. All right, you guys. Thank you guys for joining thank us. You. Uh, we love doing this so much. You guys are amazing. For we those appreciate of you, you guys. For those of you guys who are listening on Spotify, mm -hmm. if you get a chance, <laughs> watch it on <laughs> YouTube because you can see Tate's faces, <laughs> um, him rolling his eyes at me all the time. And if you guys like us, please like, comment, and share. Please. Um, we're we're get, still getting great feedback. We got some mm -hmm. great feedback today from some family members. Mm -hmm. We're like, what? That's awesome. Mm -hmm. We love it. So um, thank you guys for joining us. We will see you guys soon. And don't forget to like, comment, and share. share. And we'll see you guys soon. Bye. Bye.